Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall and I am going to show you a fun tutorial on how to create those trendy wavy designs using Adobe Illustrator. I know not everyone has access to Adobe Illustrator, but this was the most efficient way that I knew how to teach this. I'm going to see if there's a way in Silhouette Studio, but in the meantime, here's a tutorial using Illustrator. Try out the seven day trial, make all the designs, and then you can cancel your trial. Okay, let's get started. I opened up a blank document and we're going to use the type tool on the left hand side. So go ahead and click on that to pull it open and then click anywhere on your page to start typing. For my image, I'm going to use my current life motto, done is better than perfect in all caps. I'm just going to make that bigger. I'm holding down the shift key as I drag that to keep the aspect ratio, but if you want to adjust the stretch, you don't have to hold down shift, but I am holding it down so that everything is sized correctly. All right, now I'm going to highlight all of my image and change the font. I'm going to use a font from Blush Font Co called Joyful Soul, and I will link this in my video description. You can also find a lot of her fonts already in Design Space as well. Once you have your font chosen, we are going to adjust how this image looks. You could warp this image as is, but I want my words done and perfect to be the same length as is better than. So I'm going to highlight done and just eyeball this. So I'm going to increase the point size until it reaches the end of the N. Okay, that looks good. And I'll do the same thing with perfect. I'm just going to increase that until it looks similar. Okay. Now highlight everything. We're just going to center align it to make sure that it really does look good. Before I convert this to outlines, you can see that some of my letters are overlapping. And when I warp this, I want them to have a little bit more space in between the letters. So up at the top, I'm going to open my character panel. This may be on a different toolbar, but you can access it here. And I'm going to increase the letter spacing. So this is called the tracking and we're, we're going to toggle this and you can see as I increase the value, the letters just space out ever so slightly. So I'm going to do 40, that looks good to me. Right now, this font is still editable, so I can you know, change the letters and type. For Cricut to open this, we need to create this image, turn it into an actual object as opposed to an editable font. To do that, we're just going to click on the image, right click it. For me, I'm on a laptop, so I'm doing a two finger click, but you also can come up to the top and choose type and then choose create outlines. This will take your font from an editable text and turn it into an actual image. Everything is grouped together, so it all moves together as one object, but I need to be able to edit all the different lines. So I'm going to right click again and ungroup. When I ungroup, you can see that now all my letters are individually separated and I can manipulate them on their own. For Cricut, I want each line to be its own object. To do that, I'm going to make each line a compound path. Now I'm kind of throwing a lot of design jargon out there, but all you need to know is that when you open this in Design Space, instead of having every letter detach from one another, it'll all be attached and make it really easy for you when you go to cut it. Come up to object and then scroll down to compound path and click make. You can also use the hotkeys command eight. So highlight the line and then hold down the command key and eight, and that will do the same thing. So again, highlight command eight. Okay, that will make sense a little bit later on. Now I wanna adjust the spacing and the easiest way to do this is just use your arrow keys on your keyboard to scroll them up. Again, just making it look however you want it to look. You can even manipulate things further here. So if I want this to be a little bit bigger because it doesn't expand the whole width, I can adjust this to be even bigger and I can use my align tools to make sure everything is centered up perfectly. All right, just gonna scroll that down so that we can see what we're doing here. 
Of course, we can leave it this color or we can have a fun color palette. So I like to find color palettes on Design Seeds or Pinterest. So let's head over to Pinterest and I just search color palette. And this first one that comes up obviously is very popular. It's very bright and cute. And we're gonna use that one. So I'm just going to take a screenshot of this color palette and then drag the screenshot into Adobe Illustrator. To change the colors of my different lines, I just need to select my image. I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, so you can click I on your keyboard to activate that. And then you can just click on the color that you want. To bring back your cursor, you can click V or choose the cursor up at the top, highlight the second line, choose whatever color you want, choose V, highlight the last one, choose I, choose whatever color you want. And you can easily switch between colors. So if you are just trying to see what looks best, you can just scroll through the colors. All right, that looks good to me. You can keep the palette or delete it, whatever you prefer. I'm going to clear mine off. And now for the fun part, to add the effect. Start by highlighting everything. So just drag your cursor over all of your image. Come up to the top and choose Object. Drop down to Envelope Distort. And then choose Make with Warp. You have a whole bunch of different styles that you can use. Today, I'm going to show you the wave style, but there's the flag style that's really popular right now, the rise style, and of course the wave style. I have the preview turned on and you can just adjust the slider however much or little as you want. And you can see that it just automatically curves it and adjusts it perfectly. When you're happy with how it looks, hit OK, and you're done. Now we just need to save it and bring it into Design Space. Click File, Save As. We're gonna call this Done. Choose the format SVG, and then choose Save. We're going to replace ours. These are the settings that I use. You can just copy those and then click OK. Now open up Cricut Design Space and choose Upload. Upload your image, choose Done, and Upload. Select the image and add to your canvas. It will come in at the dimensions that you set in Adobe Illustrator, but you can resize this to be whatever size you want inside Cricut Design Space. And you can see that it worked perfectly where each layer is editable in Cricut. So I can easily select this and change the color within Design Space. So you can see that all the letters didn't come in on different layers. So that's the benefit of doing that compound path step. So if you did this project and each letter came in, you can see a D, O, N, E, as opposed to one layer, it's because you didn't make that compound path layer. So now my image is ready to cut. And if I choose make it, I'm going to say I'm using a mat. Everything will be separated onto the individual colors so I can load my pink vinyl on, cut the pink, then my blue, then my coral, and then transfer it onto my project. All right, so that's it. It's really that easy to create your own SVGs and design something from just a thought to a full-blown design. So hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel so that you can check out the rest of my free Cricut tutorials, Glowforge tutorials, and even some home decor projects. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.